One of the most common diet complaints we hear as coaches and then also people who are part owners of Carbon Diet Coach is I'm eating low calories and I can't seem to lose weight. In a small amount of cases, that is the case that people are eating, you know, 12, 1300 calories, they're tracking correctly and all that kind of stuff. And they just have really bad metabolic adaptation. You know, their energy expenditure is very low. But in most cases, there's actually a reasoning for it. We have numerous studies now that show that on average, most people underreport their food intake by 30 to 40, even 50%. And it may even be as high as 70% in a subcategory of obese women. And even lean people underreport their calorie intake by about 18%. Dietitians underreport by like 220 calories per day. So most people are really bad at estimating the energy content of food if they're not like weighing it specifically. People hear that and they think, oh, they're saying I'm lying. No, it's just unless you're weighing out every single piece of food, people are really bad about estimating what's in yeah, food. Yeah, that's always a bit of error. <laughs> right. There's another mistake that doesn't get talked about a lot that I think our audience may not be familiar with. And I'm gonna let Holly talk about this pretty common error mm -hmm. that could be happening that might explain why you think you're eating low calories, but you're actually not. Thinking about uh, the foods that we consume, if you're eating packaged products, there's going to be a food label. So I often talk about on my channel, uh, I guess some of the uh, labeling, common labeling errors. So things like, I guess, dietary fiber and sugar alcohols are usually subtracted from the actual calorie value. Those calories are not listed if you're based here in USA. Um, it's kind of not a regulation. Uh, other countries are kind of adapting to that. There's also, I guess, rounding errors and things like that. So but you're saying you, they can actually subtract the calories from fiber out. Is that yes, what you're saying? Yes. So that's often a lot of the reasons why people will see their um, macros, but their calories actually tell them they've still got a little bit to go. Mm. So there are some of the common reasons, but I think what a lot of people don't think about is the actual accuracy of the label itself. Like how are we assessing um, the nutritional value or the nutritional uh, constituents within foods? Something I guess we're seeing a lot of lately are some of these small kind of pop-up food manufacturers. And uh, these aren't actually regulated by the FDA. So they're under uh, law of the FDA. The problem is unless you're a big you know, company, you're not getting your stuff inspected all the time, right? So. It's not like you have to submit a sample to the FDA and then they approve it because it has in it what you, what, you, what you say it has in it. You can literally take a bunch of sugar, put it in a package and say it's a zero calorie sweetener. And if you're just selling it on a small scale, nobody would really ever know. Yeah, so I mean, I order a lot of things and treats, especially offline. I know uh, a lot of competitors, uh, particularly like at the end of their season, they want to have something to look forward to. So they're like, giant pizzas that you can buy, there are giant cookies, there are giant brownies, but there are a couple of companies that are selling, I guess, macro-friendly treats. And I actually yeah. recently asked my audience, uh, what are the favorite, um, I guess, food companies that sell your favorite desserts? So I got a bunch of submissions, um, but the most frequently um, requested or reported favorite uh, online food company was Bam Body Nutrition. And your, your client Shelly was actually eating these, right? Yes, she was. I have many clients and probably half a dozen were kind of ordering from some of these companies and Bam Body Nutrition was one of them. I collect a lot of data on my clients. As you guys know, if you follow my online stuff, I'm looking at so much data. So one of the only things that really stood out to me that could possibly be an error uh, was the label on these um, food products. So we actually decided to send away a couple of these brownies and cookies to have them analyzed to see what their actual nutrition content was. So what products did we have analyzed? Yeah, so we ordered their most popular uh, chocolate brownie, or I think it's just called their brownie, the original. Uh, we also uh, sent away their, it's a newer product of theirs, it was called the Sammy Cookie. So I guess their website claims um, that they're very, you know, macro friendly, kind of guilt free, uh, which is great. I, I've had these products. They taste amazing. And usually when something tastes that good, like I'm skeptical, you can taste the mouthfeel. If you've done like food science or you're a foodie, you can tell like when you open a package, if there's like oil or butter in the container, it's like, hmm, yeah. I wonder if those macros are correct. So just... I want to be clear. 
we didn't have these products shipped to us and then shipped to the lab. We had these products ordered direct from Bambody and sent directly to the laboratory that tested them. And we also, um, you reached out to the company after the first analysis, a little foreshadowing, <laughs> and asked them if they had changed their formula recently and they got back to you and said no. We wanted to make sure that there wasn't any kind of adjustments or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So before we get started, what were the claimed macros of the first product? Yep. So we'll first take a look at the brownie. Um, on their website, uh, for a single brownie, uh, it weighs 62 grams and the reported macronutrient breakdown is as follows. So 130 calories, three grams of fat, nine grams of carbohydrate, and 17 grams of protein. Sounds pretty good. It does. I mean, I had this, I've tracked it as that. It was delicious and I probably had two or three because, well, I, was the, like, yeah. because I was like, well, the macros are good. I can make more of this fit my macros. So yeah, I would exactly. have a couple of extra. You can have three and have less than 10 grams of fat and less than 30 grams of carbs. It's, Who wouldn't want to do that instead of chicken and broccoli? Exactly. And like almost 60 grams of protein. Uh, from our lab analysis, so we used a company called uh, Debo Laboratories and they're based in Illinois. So we had them shipped straight there. And the results from this analysis uh, were quite shocking, to be honest. Uh, we, so we had no idea what this was going to be. We really did. We, I was optimistic. I really yeah, was. I, th I thought, I was thinking, okay, maybe, like it'll probably be off, but everything's off a little bit. Maybe it'll be off a modest amount or something like that. Like there was, I remember there were protein bars back in the early 2000s that were off like, you know, like 30% and people were outraged or whatever, but this like blew my mind. The lab analysis came back with the following. So 272 calories and this is based- Over double. Yeah, so this is based off the individual macronutrients that they report. So 12.66 uh, grams of fat, 34.91 grams of carbohydrate. Probably don't need the hundredth place decimal. That's right. I'm, I, don't, I just want to be accurate here. I'm just doing exactly the math. It, well, even the analysis isn't that accurate. <laughs> no, it's like 0 0.000 percentages. Well, yeah. So the analysis is done in percentages. Uh, and then protein is 4.68. So claimed 17 actual uh, protein. So about a quarter of the actual claim protein content. Yeah. And now I do want to preface this. I went onto the website for looking for disclaimers. Like, you know, is there anything that kind of says like these macros are wrong clearly, but this is all that their site actually had to say. So it says at the bottom of the brownie page, uh, macros are an estimation as these are baked goods and some product is lost or may shift in the baking process. So, I mean, that's true. Like you're, you're, you're having that, but the, the problem is you would still expect to see the proportion of protein, carbohydrate, and fat be the same. Mm -hmm. Like you would still expect that. Yeah, so uh. like for example, like at the moment the sample size is 62 grams. Even if they got cut into bigger, like accidentally slightly bigger portion sizes, you would expect to see the ratio, like at least replicate what their original. And even uh, then, it, it wouldn't matter with the analysis because the analysis is done on a small amount and it's just a percentage. percentage base, right. Exactly. So it would be scalable. Yeah. Now, do we want to talk about like the analysis that was actually done? Yeah, sure. Do you want to jump in and explain maybe yeah. uh, how we determine. Taking myself back to food science. I know, mm -hmm. right? So, generally speaking, if you were looking to get just a calorie uh, value, uh, the most common, um, I guess, method of testing is usually just a bomb calorimeter. And that just looks at, uh, I guess, the total amount of energy. Um, they've kind of put the food inside a bomb calorimeter. It's heated up. And then basically the change in temperature, they use water. So it kind of heats up the water and the change in temperature is basically what energy or empathy. Um, and then it can kind of work back to what's the actual calories in that food product. But for this is a little bit more specific because we actually have a carbohydrate, fat and protein breakdown. Yeah. So when they do the analysis for these things, there's a, there's a few different methods they can use. And we, we want to be clear, we don't know exactly which methods they use, but the most common for protein is a Keldahl analysis. So a Keldahl analysis, you're basically trying to extract the nitrogen content of the protein as ammonia. So protein is unique and that is the only macronutrient that contains nitrogen. So what they do is they it's much more involved than this, but essentially they heat a sample up really hot and they use something like um, ammonium sulfate and that will extract some of that nitrogen as ammonia, especially I think they add uh, sodium hydroxide and that basically get the ammonia to come off as gas and then that gas is collected and recondensed and based on the weight of that ammonia, they can determine how much nitrogen is in that sample 
And then if you know how much nitrogen is in a sample, nitrogen is about 16% on average the weight of protein. So what you can do is multiply the amount of nitrogen, the, you know, the gram amount of nitrogen by 6.25 and that will give you your approximate protein amount. Now, fats is a little bit simpler. Um, they use a solvent extraction method. So fats are nonpolar, meaning they don't mix with water, whereas carbohydrates and protein mostly do. There's some amino acids that are, are hydrophobic, lucky. but um, <laughs> for the most part, fat is the only thing that will mix with nonpolar stuff. So you use a solvent like chloroform or ether or something that's nonpolar, and you pull off that fat. Essentially. So basically you would look at the total weight of the um, product that you're trying to analyze and then whatever the weight of the um, pooled amount is, that's basically Well, actually, you just, you just weigh it before and after. Okay. So you have so the sample. The difference. Now, the, the sample, it's not like you take a piece of whatever, just food and put it down there. They do some, <laughs> like, uh, I think they treat it with acid and they, tr and they uh, dry it and some other yeah, things. Yeah, I've actually done this in food science back in the university days, but I feel like I would have to go back. It's so, some of the, It's pretty involved. It's, it's really complicated. I remember... Yeah. It was very difficult. So anyway, yeah, I've done. On. I did solvent extraction in undergrad yeah. school when I was um, doing organic chemistry research. So, but basically, um, you're using an organic, uh, nonpolar solvent. You're adding it to the sample. You're which exactly. essentially pulls the fat off that product. You weigh the product before. You weigh it after. The difference is how much fat was in the mm -hmm. the product. Mm -hmm. So now you've got your protein. You've got your fat. And carbohydrate is actually just determined uh, through a difference method. So you've got, they basically determine the amount of protein, fat, alcohol, if there is any. And then ash. And then ash, yeah. so they burn it. Yeah. And then whatever's left over is carbohydrate. So carbohydrate is determined by difference. So that's how they come up with these values, presumably. We were so shocked with the first one that... We had a second one submitted. So I'm still waiting to get the analysis from the second brownie back. Now we did do another product as well. So I'm going to read out the second product. It's the Sammy sandwich cookie. And when we get the second sample done, because I want to make sure that this isn't just a fluke, which right. it potentially could be. Maybe someone got a little heavy handed in the kitchen that day. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, let's have a look at the Sammy sandwich cookie. So this is the newest one. I tried this. Super tasty, guys. Really good if you don't care about the nutrition. Reported macro breakdown. So this is a 65 gram cookie, 140 calories, 5 grams of fat, 15 grams of carbohydrate and 9 grams of protein. Uh, the d -ball laboratory analysis came back at 290 Calories. So again, <laughs> over double. Yeah. Um, it came back at 13.5 grams of fat. Uh, so that's an eight and a half uh, difference in the actual fat content. Uh, and then 37.9 uh, grams of carbohydrate. Uh, so that's a 22 gram difference in uh, carbs. And then 4.1 uh, grams of protein. Why aren't so you rounding those up? Because you growled at me last time. <laughs> no, but that's actually accurate. But if you're going to show the tip decimal place, you got to round up. Okay, I'm mm. going to put the actual analysis on the friggin' screen for you. So you can look, look who's being OCD now. <laughs> yeah, again, like we're talking double the calories here. So, and more. So, yeah. I think the most important thing to consider here is that, first off, yes, they taste great. Um, but I think if you are somebody that has used these or consumed these products and you are trying to seriously track your progress and you've stalled and this is an item that is... Well, think about it for a second. Let's say you're having one of these brownies a day. Well, some of my clients were having one every day. It was like their treat, you know, macro-friendly treat at the and end of the And one of the evening. cookies. I mean, you're talking about 150 calorie difference with the cookies and 140 calorie difference with the brownies. Mm -hmm. So you're actually... Like, that's 290 calories right there. That could be the difference between losing, losing weight, weight and not. not. Absolutely, because we know obviously there's that maintenance calorie range. If we've dropped somebody into a deficit in order to lose body fat um, and then they were having a product like this or any other product where the, the nutrition is incorrect, that's going to put them back into their maintenance calorie range and they would not lose. And that's exactly what was happening uh, with a couple of my clients who were having these. So I'm really pleased that we did it. Um, it's quite an expensive um, procedure to have done yes. for one cookie. Uh, I believe it was about $250 or no, it started off at a base amount. If you just wanted the calories, it was like 150 and then to have the additional carbohydrate and then the fat and protein individually analyzed, there was an additional fee for each of those. So just for one product, I think it was well into the 200s. Um, so, I mean, that's why like, 
a lot of companies can probably get away with this stuff because who's going to go yeah, out who's and spend, to spend that much money of their own? You know, that money on like analyzing something and then not potentially having the experience or well, expertise here's the, here's, to know how to interpret it. Here's the other thing: people don't want to know the truth. No, <laughs> they don't want to know the truth because then I know, they find I was like, no, it's not true. <laughs> they don't want to find this out because then their favorite treat is gone, right? Like I get this with people all the time. They go, "Well, I have hormone problems," and I say, "Well, have you actually gotten and had those measured?" No. Well, why not? You know, like if you actually had a hormone problem, you could get medication for it and, and fix, fix it. it yeah. It's because they don't want to not have that excuse. I think one disclaimer I will make. So first off, it's possible we could have just gotten two really bad, bad batches. batches. But it's unlikely. Um, we, we requested them on different dates, different order numbers. It's unlikely. And second, you would expect that even if it was a bad batch, it wouldn't be off by this much. Um, the other disclaimer is they could be using ingredients that are mislabeled themselves. Mm -hmm. So perhaps they're using a whey protein that's actually all carbon fat. I, I don't know. Um, I think that that's probably unlikely as well. But again, I don't want to infer intention or anything like that. You know, could, it could just be a mistake. We'll, we'll know more when we get the other sample it's back. A confirmation. But yeah, yeah, it's confirmation. It's gotten that's the hardest it's, thing. A lot of the companies, like their smaller online companies, won't actually have an, an analysis done. They will just use the combination of ingredients and the amounts and use the nutrition information to come up with their own label. Which, I mean, it's a very it's a logical way to do things because you would assume that nutrition labels are correct. But like Lane said, I think uh, it's very unlikely if you look at the ingredients list of the products. Yeah, they're uh, pretty you know, basic they, ingredients. It's, it's claimed like the whey protein is the number one ingredient and by law, uh, the way that you have to label the ingredients, it is the most um, dense or the most, um, uh, I guess I the it's most the amount. Weight, yeah, right? by yeah. weight, the most amount goes first. That's the product that's listed first and it is whey on, on these products. So There also could be companies that are putting out diet products that hit these hit the numbers that they claim the problem is you don't know so what i think the conclusion would be is if you're really struggling to lose weight you feel like your calories are really low really strip back and look at what you're eating mm -hmm. and say okay where do i have potential for error and maybe stripping it back to kind of mostly single ingredient whole foods right like i, I hate using nebulous terms mm. But, you know, just using, you know, basic fruits and vegetables and protein sources and not relying on some of these things and yeah. weighing out every single thing that you're eating. And then if you're still not losing weight after, you know, a few weeks, then you can be pretty confident to say, okay, I'm not losing weight on low calories. Yeah, and something even for me, like when I've been competing in the past, um, I'll notice that when I go out, we eat out a lot. I will make a very good estimation about the portion sizes, but that those will be the weeks that I never ever make as much progress and it just goes to show like the amount of added fats typically yep. that are used in restaurant foods um, is even more than what I allow for like I'll always deliberately go in at the end I'll track all my foods and then I'll dump like an extra 10 grams of fat just to make sure and I still won't make progress on the week on those weeks and really that's the only thing that I know uh, is kind of off so I guess it's really important yeah. if you want to make sure that you are making progress Take it back into your responsibility. Don't allow for anyone else to have any yeah. control over that. And um, we're not saying never go out to eat or anything like no, that. No, 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 no. You might be able to not have the physique you want with also the lifestyle you want. Mm -hmm. That may not be possible. So if you want to eat out all the time, it may not be possible. Now, if you're in maintenance mode or something like that, like you've found that you can go out to eat pretty regularly oh, yeah, and maintain that sort of thing. Again, you may perceive dieting as much more difficult because what you are tracking seems like low calories when in fact it is not. So unless you are weighing out every single piece of food you're putting in your mouth and you're not losing weight at very low calories, don't say you're not losing weight at low calories because the likelihood is that there are hidden calories either in diet products or from eating out or from um, you know just not tracking appropriately that you're missing. Well guys, I think that's all from us today. Uh, we hope that you found this video uh, helpful. Um, and I guess we will see you guys next time. <laughs> I'm going to go get some brownies. <laughs>